Hey folks, I'm your host, RR Slugger, and I just wanted to say that snow speeders are gray and always have been, despite what modern LEGO revisionists would have you believe. <laughs> all right, all right, let me back up for a moment. Ever since I first discussed LEGO Star Wars in my Dark Meat video, I've had folks ask me when I would next talk about this truly prolific licensed theme. To be honest though, I don't have much to say about the cutthroat brick economist's favorite investment vehicle. There is one subject I am passionate about, however, and that just so happens to be the topic of today's video. Even though The Empire Strikes Back only garners a single slug on the slugometer when compared to its immediate peers, I'm still a big fan of many elements in this movie, especially Industrial Light and Magic's immaculate model and miniature work. One such scene is the Rebels' valiant defense and evacuation of Echo Base on Hoth. Paramount to their success is the before-mentioned Snowspeeder, first introduced into the larger LEGO tapestry in 1999, alongside some of the very first licensed sets of any IP. While many of these early Star Wars sets came across as general approximations at best, I feel that the original Snowspeeder in particular was way ahead of its time. Not to go on too much of a tangent, but one thing that struck me immediately upon building this set is how the designers basically aced it right out of the gate. So many other Star Wars vehicles have seen intense redesigns over the years, but the groundwork laid by this Snowspeeder remains nearly unchanged to this day. 20 years later, we can still see the same cockpit design, the same single piece cannon molds, the same ailerons, and most importantly, the same ratcheted connection points for the wings and slope bricks to force the proper contour. The bones of the modern LEGO Snowspeeder are firmly rooted in the past, and I'm not sure you can make that same claim about any other Star Wars model from 1999. Minor amendments can be seen in the various iterations over the years, and I think it's perfectly fine to prefer one of these builds instead. They certainly have one thing over the original model, and that's the change to the more correct on-screen color of white. Or is it? To help me confirm this, I needed the assistance of a true LEGO Star Wars expert, so I turned to Mayday Figs. Hey Mayday, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Slug? I'm doing great. Thanks for sitting down and talking with me. Congrats on 10,000 subscribers, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I couldn't, couldn't have done it without you, you know. It was like, <laughs> I, re I really appreciate it, man. I, you know, it, it's... All right, I'm done. That's it. As the resident LEGO Star Wars expert between the two of us, I think you would probably agree with that assessment there. <laughs> I had some questions I want to ask you here, and um, they have to do with the colors of Star Wars vehicles. I'm looking for split-second, one-word answers. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to name the vehicle, and I want you to give me the color of the vehicle, if that's all right. Okay, even if it's like medium blue or light bluish gray. Yeah, just one word, just just the color of the vehicle. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't have to adhere to a Lego color. Just what color in your mind is that vehicle? Got it. All right, here we go. Star Destroyer. Gray. Nabu Starfighter. Yellow. Snow Speeder. White. Wrong! Wrong! It's gray! They're gray! What? You call yourself a Star Wars expert. They're gray! No, Look not. at the movie! No, no it, it is. is not. Look at the movie! Look at the movie! Snow speeders are gray, and always have been. Yet, ever since 2003, the LEGO group would insist to you that snow speeders are white, not gray. In a sort of Berenstain Bears Mandela effect, it sometimes feels to me that the internet has just accepted that snow speeders are white in the movie, and therefore these modern LEGO recreations are somehow more accurate. But again, that just isn't the case. Let's look at the evidence. First off, the engineers at Industrial Light and Magic aren't fools. They aren't going to paint a ship model white with the knowledge that it'll later be superimposed over a white background, and predictably, they didn't. Here's a photo of the original model designed by ILM. Notice the distinct difference between the grey hull and the cream white walls behind it. But Slugger, it's not fair to call that gray. It's very obviously light gray. <sighs> You're right. If only Lego made pieces in that color. 
O. Here's a shot from the movie itself. See the snow white background and the not white snow speeders in front of it? The dark shadows being cast on the cannons even legitimized the use of dark gray pieces in the 1999 set. But that only takes into account the ILM model. What about the full scale filming model used on location? Well, this one's even more gray than the other one. Even using AI to recolor this image tells us what we already knew. The snow speeders on screen are gray, not white. So why would the LEGO group seemingly nail the color choices right out of the gate, only to later backpedal into make-believe territory? Unfortunately, the designer responsible for the 2003 and 2004 models has little to say about the change, only that it summarily happened under their watch. The only other lead I was able to find was in a review of the 2017 UCS Snowspeeder, where the author claimed the change of base color back in the day was due to market research. Sadly, no source is listed, so the trail runs cold, but honestly, it sounds plausible to me. The white color is certainly much more distinct when compared to the cavalcade of grey ships that now plague the LEGO Star Wars catalog. I can understand the desire to have something stand out as a toy, even if it doesn't reflect screen accurate color choices. What I can't understand is how so many LEGO Star Wars fans and content creators online seem to dismiss this original set out of hand without any regard to the aspects it does better than its successors. I'm just trying to stick up for the little guy here, which was also grey by the way. All of this does make me beg the question though, why is the screen accurate shapes with toyish colors principle exclusive to the snow speeder? I guess what I'm getting at is why continue to make grey toy versions of ships that aren't grey to begin with. This brings me to part 2 of the video, TIE Fighters are blue, kind of. Okay, so the foundation behind this is far shakier, but just hear me out. It's undeniable that many scenes with the TIE Fighters in the original trilogy depict them with a bluish-grey appearance. Many of the original Kenner toys even reflect this, as do some of the filming models themselves. However, again, the folks working at ILM aren't fools. They aren't going to paint a ship blue when they know it's being filmed against a blue screen, and they mostly didn't. Much of the bluish tinge we see on screen in these movies is due to light reflecting off the blue screen itself and bathing the models in a bluish light. With that being said, that is the color we see them as in the film, intended or not. I think there's a legitimate claim to be made that TIE Fighters are indeed blue, or at least a bluish grey. If only LEGO made pieces in that color. Oh. <laughs> now, your mileage may vary, but to my eye, both light bluish grey and dark bluish grey do a poor job at replicating the nuance to the muted blue of the on-screen TIE Fighters. This hue is perhaps sandier. If you haven't guessed it already, the color I've set my sights on is Sand Blue, a near perfect LEGO representation of the shade in question. Go ahead and try this little experiment. Pause the video and hold up a Sand Blue piece, a light bluish grey piece, and a dark bluish grey piece to these filming models. Which one do you feel is the closest match? The LEGO group has always known TIE Fighters are blue. Just look at the original models. While certainly not subtle, the intention is clear. To my knowledge, however, the LEGO group would never incorporate the coveted sand blue into a TIE Fighter of this scale, instead just overcorrecting straight into grey territory and never looking back. There were a couple of times they made the right call though, however, it was only on a very small scale. Still, what an improvement to the overall uniquity and accuracy of this model. And might I add that once you've seen sand blue TIE Fighters realized in full scale, it's hard to go back to the land of grey. Not only is this a more screen accurate depiction, but it's also more colourful and toyish, just like the modern snow speeders. The LEGO group seems intent on continuing with the worst of both worlds in that regard though, so it feels like a lost cause. 
Now, if only these Mixel joints came in any other colors. I'll take the official reasoning at face value, but if a connection system within LEGO can only be produced in two specific colors without the risk of plastic breaking, then it's an extremely limited and lousy connection system that needs replacing. Full stop. Oh, oh, sorry, I forgot the drop. With that, I can leave this rather niche topic behind. It's not something I expect anyone else to care about, but it's been on my mind for a long time. Despite the title of the video, I can understand the creative decision to design white snow speeders, making for better toys. In the end, it's actually the decision surrounding modern LEGO TIE Fighters that I can't quite wrap my head around. Sand blue TIE Fighters would be both more screen accurate and more toyish in appearance. A win-win if ever I saw one. Oh well. Anyways, thanks for listening to these long-winded ramblings of a slug. We may find ourselves in the wild world of LEGO Star Wars again at a later date, but until then, live long and prosper. I've been your host, RR Slugger, and I'll see you next time for another video.